But it's not the prizes that have kept people tuning in for years. It's a whole lot more. The new prizes, right? Bob Barker! Over the years, scores of game shows have tried their luck with television audiences. But none of them as successfully as The Price is Right. How about Amy Pico? Come on now. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. For nearly half a century, the show has entertained audiences with its high-energy contestants, clever pricing games, and big-ticket prizes. $10,000! While the prices themselves have changed significantly over the years, the show's successful formula has remained the same. The actual retail price is $700. Actual retail price... Eleven twenty-nine. Now the actual retail price is. Hey, the object's simple. Guess the price of an item as close as possible without going over the manufacturer's suggested retail price. Well, everybody has to deal with prices all the time. You know, you can't go through a day without dealing with some kind of price. And most everybody thinks they know the right price. And of course, the best part of it is when. When somebody gets on and doesn't know what they're doing, you say, well, you dummy, I could do better than that. It makes people feel good. If you think a surfboard is $4,500, I am going to give you the bargain of your life. The Price is Right. The Price is Right debuted in 1956 with host Bill Cullen. Here, welcome anyway to The Price is Right. A little later on, all you folks, especially you at home, are going to get a chance to bid for the showcase. Then in 1972, a former radio personality turned game show host named Bob Barker took over the reins, and the rest is game show history. Oh, wow! Yes, all right. You want to stay up here and play a pricing game, don't you? Love to. Okay. Now, how are you going to explain it to these three people down here? Well, they're young, and they'll understand. <laughs> Bob recently celebrated his 30th anniversary as the show's host. Bob is the glue that keeps everything together, that makes people watch over and over and over again. He definitely is the price is right. People specifically come to see him. No. Oh, no. They can't wait to run up on stage and give him a kiss on the cheek. And that is... I've worked with most Aries hosts in television. Nobody's like Bob Barker. He's done everything, and he's fabulous at it. All you have to do is watch him and know how natural it comes to him and how much he's able to get out of everybody that he talks to on the air. Ah, Bob Barker, good to see you again. It's good to be with you, Al. You know, watching that tape, you get a lot of love on that show. I get a lot of love, and I get a lot of bruises, too. <laughs> Does it seem like 30 years? Uh, sometimes it seems much longer, <laughs> and sometimes it seems like only yesterday that we started. You know, it's funny. I remember the big controversy when you decided to stop dyeing your hair, and you, you <laughs> came up. What, you know, was that a, were you surprised at all the hoopla about that? I really was. I was surprised that uh, it was uh, news all over the country that my hair was white, mm -hmm. but I, uh, I, uh, I had tinted it, and it began to make it red and uh, that wasn't very attractive yeah. and they tried dyeing it and that made it blue and that wasn't very attractive <laughs> i went on vacation i came back and I, i'd let my hair go white and so we decided i would just do the show that way but we had taped ahead mm -hmm. so on tuesday my hair was dark and wednesday it <laughs> was white i got a letter from a gentleman in the midwest he said bob you must have had one hell of a night <laughs> <laughs> How has the show changed since you started doing it in 1972? I mean, it's remained the same, but yet it's changed as well. The biggest change is my hair. <laughs> no, it, uh, the set is the same. The set looks just like it did in the 70s. But uh, the prices, that's what has really changed. Mm. The first car I gave away was $2,465. Wow. We had car after car, four digits, Two was the first number, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we've had to change our props to accommodate five digits right. because cars, and then they tell us there's no inflation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny, I watch the show, and I notice there are a lot of young people on the show, a lot of college students. That's right. How do they do? Well, we're blessed. It, uh, it happened. We don't know how it happened. If, uh, if we did, we could bottle it and sell it. Mm -hmm. But it became a cult thing with the college youngsters. And now they come from all over the country, East Coast, Midwest, and of course the West Coast, mm -hmm. and they give our show great energy. It's, it's <laughs> just wonderful. <laughs> you know, a lot of people forget, if they're, say, younger than me, that you had a long run on another game show, Truth or Consequences. Truth or Consequences. You did that 18 years? I did it 18 years, yeah. Now, what was it? How did you get started in these game shows? Well, uh, I 
I started working at a radio station when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first, they didn't call them game shows, they were audience participation shows. Mm -hmm. The first audience participation show I did, my wife heard. And she said, that's what you should do. She said, you do that better than you've ever done anything else. Now, she didn't say I was good. <laughs> she just said I did it better than I'd ever done anything else. Yeah. And I set out to do precisely what I'm, what I'm doing. Yeah. Now, uh, any fan of the show knows what a big supporter you are. <laughs> wow. There, that, yeah. that, 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 <laughs> that's audience participation. That, well, <laughs> I've been beaten up for 45 years on television. But you look great. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody knows that you are a big animal rights activist. Yes, How I did am. you get involved in that? Well, I'd always loved animals, but about uh, 20, 25 years ago, I was the uh, chairman of Be Kind to Animals Week in Los Angeles. And as such, I did interviews and was invited by groups to participate. And for the first time, I began to actually become involved. Mm -hmm. And as I did and learned of the terrible exploitation of animals, I felt compelled to do what I could to rectify the situation, and that's what I've been doing. Well, we really appreciate that, and we appreciate your work on The Price is Right. And you're going to help us out on the plaza. We've got a contestant, and we are about to play The Price is Right with Bob Barker right after these messages. Come on down! Thank you, Don Pardo. And now we're about to play Cliffhangers from The right. Price is Right and Bob Barker. Bob, we're going to bring our contestant down, Misty Morris. Come on, Come on down! down. Are you a big fan of the show? Yes, I love it. Yeah, you're from Texas A&M? I am, sure am. Giggle, whoop! <laughs> Woo! You're used to this, right, aren't you, Bob? I love it. I feel just as if I were home. And I like this. There's a sign over here, Bob Rocks. That's right. I like that. Bob Barker Rocks. And I, Bob, Bob does rock. I have a rocking chair that I watch <laughs> television I rock. Misty, are you a fan of, you're a fan of this show? Are you a fan of game shows in yes. particular? Yes, yes. All right. Just are there other games? No, there aren't There's other, not game, any shows. other game shows. Bob, now, you're the one who picked Misty. Why, how'd Misty get picked? I, I did not pick her. You did not. No, I was told you no, were. No. But we picked her out of the crowd at random. No. Well, I can certainly understand why. I Miss, love Bob. Misty, she, that's why she was chosen. Because, because right she loves there. Bob. There because you go. Because he beat Adam Sandler. That's yeah, that's right. right. Happy Gilmore. Oh, Bam. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Okay, tell us about this game, Bob. I want to talk about Happy Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because you were... I'll tell you about the game. Okay. All right. Now, this is called Cliffhanger. You've seen this, haven't you? Oh, yeah. You? And the idea is to preserve the life of this poor mountain climber. If he He's falls safe. off the cliff at the top, you're not in good shape. But if you can not miss the prices of three products here, I'll show you, by more than $25, he won't. That's the whole idea of the game. Now, how... See, how difficult is this game compared to some of the ones that are on the show itself, Bob? Well, it's, it's all based on a knowledge of prices. Everything we do is based on right, prices. Now. And it's no more difficult. It's no less difficult. Okay. It's about medium, medium difficult. Medium difficult. Right. I'm going to be one of the Barker girls. Oh, that, <laughs> uh, just that is going to be a stretch of our imagination. <laughs> but we'll do the best we can. All righty. Misty, we're going to play cliffhangers, and the lovely Al is going to help us. That's now, right. The three, the three prizes over here that you must give me the prices of will be described by the lovely Al. Go That's ahead, right. Al. The first one we have is a rival nonstick sandwich maker. A rival nonstick sandwich maker. All right. Now, you tell me what you believe is the price of the nonstick sandwich maker. What do you think? What do I think? <laughs> I don't know. Ask frankly. your pals over there, mister. Hey, are we I, saying I, I don't know the prices of, of any of the prices. I say $20, Bob. She says $20. Should I reveal the now, price, Bob? No. Nope. Is that nope. right? No, it's not right. So don't, don't oh, show it don't yet. Show it He'll move one step. <laughs> Lovely Al, I have to help That's you right. 21. Here. He'll move one step for every dollar that you miss the price of the sandwich maker. Here he goes. If I miss it by a lot, y'all are say, fired. Here he goes. Here he goes. I repeat. Here this, he goes. This, this, is, this is just like home, you know? It's okay, then maybe she's got the right he price. <laughs> I asked if that was the right price. Here we go. And Nothing happened, and, and I thought that it was not. So it's the right got price. It exactly right. Okay. Now, what do we have next? We've got a Black & Decker cordless 
Compact Dust Buster, Bob. All right, what do you believe is the price of that? Bob. 32. All right, $32. Is that right? Okay. It didn't work the first time. Well, it's now, right I don't know time. whether it's right or not. Or should we? Should, let's okay, move let's it. Move, move the mountain climb. Okay, for every dollar. There it is. Move it. Uh oh, it keeps going. And oh, the price, Bob, is $25. All right. Now, you have only one to go. You can miss it by as much as $18 Whoa. and still win. All righty. So don't miss it by more than $18, and you've won our prize. This is, now, Misty, this is a Holmes air purifier. It's an air purifier. What do you believe is the prize? Well, you know what, Don, we have to find out what she what, won. Don Pardo, tell her what she's won. Today's grand prize for the price is right is a beautiful Joy Hill dining room set from the Attic Heirlooms Collection. The actual retail price for this set is $4,888, provided by Joy Hill. Student gonna do with a room full of dining room furniture? <laughs> Sell it on eBay. <laughs> Sell it on Sell eBay. Sell it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, she was amazing. Two out of the three prizes she got dead on. She watches the show, don't you? I watch the you show. That, that's Mark. why Al, it's very important to watch the prizes. Absolutely, you've got to watch day. the prizes, that's right? That's right. My God, so you guys all proud of Misty? Yeah. And this is what you do oh. every day, right, Bob? Hey, Jenny, we give away thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of I prizes just... every day. We have fun every day. And this is typical of the prices. And you right almost today. got stampeded by these college students. <laughs> oh. You asked the question before, why did we choose Misty? I think we know. Yeah. Bob, and again, congratulations you. on your 30th anniversary. Thank you, Al. The price is right. How do you deal with the people when they just go bananas? Well, if they don't go bananas, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I got them covered. So you're the perfect contestant. Congratulations Thank on that so Broy Hill dining room set. Wow, I That's know. Right. It's going to go in my little itty-bitty apartment. <laughs> Tomorrow on Game Show Legends. <laughs> Would you give up a new living room to see what's behind curtain number two? Well, with Monty at your side, you were convinced you couldn't lose. And you know what? The fans never did. It's time for Let's Make a Deal, starring TV's big dealer, Monty Hall. He was the fast-talking, smooth-operating host of Let's Make a Deal. $500, Mrs. Kellogg. Snap. Crackle. $525. $550. 575 $600. For more than two decades, Monty Hall presided over a TV trading floor where costume contestants could barter anything from ham patties to super glue. Here's a treat for those special dinners, $700 worth of beef. The show was all about a chance, a chance to trade a good deal for a better one. Take a look at your new kitchen appliances. That retails for $259, total value of the deal, $1,673. But there was always the risk of getting zonked. She turned down 600 bucks and has herself a slip. <laughs> what was behind curtain number one you could have had, and back there, we had a live ostrich. There is what you would call getting the bird. Shortly after the show debuted in 1963, 
audience members started wearing costumes to try and catch Monty's eye and be chosen for a deal. They get dressed up like, I don't know what that is. Every now and then, celebrities would show up to trade. Now, do you want the coffee and what's behind it, or do you want the candy and what's inside it? Goodness, you see, I didn't believe in candy. First of all, it's fattening. Then I... Darling, like... we have a sponsor. <laughs> Monty Hall dressed the part of a real Wheeler dealer in his striped ties and plaid suits. These things were allowed even by 1970s standards. And the audience loved him. Then here's Moretta sitting beside you. Is this gift wrap for me? Yes, yes. If you want it, you can have it. <laughs> Sometimes they loved him a little too much. As a matter of fact, I'll go for the lady at the end of the row. <laughs> Comes time to test the egg. And of course it's raw. That's okay. I once asked Monty what it takes to be a great game show host. And he said in his self-deprecating way, great hair, white teeth, and the ability to let the contestant be the star. She can't look and take a look at what's behind door number three. It is twenty thousand dollars. While not every contestant went home with a shiny new car or a vacation in paradise, for the viewers, one deal was certain. Tune in, and you'd have a pretty good time. And thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a wonderful cruise. Think of me. Send me a postcard, will you? Love. Okay. Now we want to thank the Game Show Network and Columbia TriStar with their help with that segment. Monty Hall, it is good to see you. Thanks, Al. Good to see you. I got to tell you, not only do, is everybody crazy about you, but those suits and uh, those sport coats. Did you ever see such a wardrobe in your life? <laughs> Checks and stripes and turtlenecks. I really set fashions, didn't I? <laughs> set them back up. Better <laughs> That's right. But you look fabulous right now. Feeling good. You know, you 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 started off. You're, you were born in Canada. Uh, and you were about to go to college, you had to drop out, and, and a, a total stranger kind of made a deal for you, didn't he? Yeah, when I dropped out for lack of funds, a man who had a, a manufacturing company next to where I was working saw me washing this, the steps of this building, and he said to my father one day, he said, what is he doing washing floors and washing steps? Why isn't he at school? And my father said, we have no money. He said, tell him to come and see me. This stranger sat down with me and said, I'll send you back to college if you'll obey certain rules that you'll keep an A average, that you'll pay back the money someday, that you'll do it for somebody else. I mean, the rules were wonderful. And I went back, and I went all the way through college and got my Bachelor of Science degree, and I paid him back. And because of investment in me, his investment, I put scores of people through college. In fact, that's one of, before we get to some of the other stuff, children's charities are a big part of your life, aren't yeah. they? Well, I'm the international chairman of the Variety Clubs, the children's charity, and uh, we're all over the world. And uh, that's been a very... A very happy thing with me. I, I started Variety the week that I married Marilyn, mm -hmm. 54 years ago. Wow. She's in the studio thinking, uh -huh. <laughs> is it going to be 55? Uh -oh. <laughs> Her father was a charter member and he got me to join Variety and it has been a ride that has been a very, very happy one for me. We've raised mm -hmm. millions and millions of dollars. For yeah, I think $800 million. All Eight, well, that's what my personal, right. Variety has raised over a billion dollars. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. Now. Let's make a deal. Was was your brainchild? How, how did Steve Hados, my my partner mm -hmm. now deceased, he and I came up. He was working for me. I was I was doing a show called Video Village on CBS as an MC, and I sold my first show to NBC called Your First Impression. Mm -hmm. And I needed a producer, and I hired Steve, and he would produce it, and I'd be over there working. I'd run back and forth between two studios, and then we'd have lunch together. And we came up with this idea together. Did you? Was it a hard sell to the networks? Was it hard? We showed it to uh, ABC. And they said, it's a wonderful show, but what do you do the second day? <laughs> so they turned it down, then we showed it to NBC. And they said, it's a wonderful show, but what do you do the second day? <laughs> and CBS wasn't looking at game shows. And the only three customers you had in those days. Sure. No syndication, no cable, nothing like that. And it was a heartbreak for us because the reaction was so great. But uh, several months later, one of the executives at NBC insisted, insisted, and told his boss, we've got to make a pilot. We made the pilot, and we wait, waited about six months after that before we got the okay. Were you surprised at the success of the show? Absolutely, because we went into a time period where they had tried about five or six shows prior to us, and they lasted 13 weeks and out. Mm -hmm. and they threw us into that spot. They said, well, you're next to go <laughs> feed you to the wolves. But the, it was an amazing success overnight. What do you think? What, what was the success of, of Let's Make a Deal? I think it, it had a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And long before, long before the costumes came, it had an energy... 
The whole show was done in the arena with the people. Mm -hmm. I went and took my people at, at, at random, as you can see, and look at the excitement. There was a, I mean, a lot of it. People seemed to let their, their, their hair down, no pun intended, in, in a show like this. I mean, they acted like you'd never expect well, that. No one knew who was going to be selected. So sure. when you're sitting in an audience, and all of a sudden this man comes up and points his finger at you and says, you're next. You forget your name. You forget who you are. You go be served. I understand people still run up to you and show you the contents of their purses or their wallets. That happened coming into NBC today. They're literally. Right. <laughs> and it was very good because I got two donuts and a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it, we're so excited about this that you're going to be out on the plaza yeah. playing Let's Make a Deal with us. And, we'll uh, do that. It's really been exciting. Right, All great. right, Monty Hall, when we come back, we're going to go out in the plaza. We're going to play Let's Make a Deal. Is it a zonk? Is it a real deal? We'll find out right after these words from our sponsors. That's got to feel good. Now we're going to start the game. You're going to go in and do a couple of uh, quickies. Quickies. We'll do some quickies, get some money in their hands. Okay, okay, now listen to me, folks. I'm going to do a few. Remember the end of the show, I did those quickie deals where I'd ask people for things. For example, sir, do you have a wallet with you, sir? Do you have a wallet? If that wallet is not black, if it's brown, uh, is it brown? Oh, that's right. I'll still make a deal. It's black. Oh, I said, no, but well, you had a wallet. That's worth 20 bucks right there. Now, if you have less than $50 in that wallet, if you have less than $50, how much have you got? Zero. Zero. You've got $50 now because that's what I'm going to give you. You want 50 bucks? Why are you walking around with no money in your pocket? It's New York. <laughs> You know, you can start with something and then have nothing in your pocket. Right. Here, yeah, hold out your hand. Ready? 10, 10 20, 20, 30, 30 40, 40, 50. 50. That's, that's real money, you know, because it's got Matt Lauer's picture on it. That's real, real, real money. All right. I'll take my hair. Where are you from? I'm from Hickory, North Carolina. Can you prove it? I can. Yeah, I can. Oh, good. <laughs> You love that accent. I My, I, I love it. some everything. Yeah, oh, well, tell me what you got that proves that you got. What have you got? I yeah. have a wallet. You, you got a wallet. You got a driver's license? I have a driver's Show license. Show me that driver's license. Yes, Show me that driver's license. That one. I'm telling look, you. Look what she has in her purse I've got, over here. I've got a bagel. Did you yeah. eat breakfast? Oh, I had breakfast. <laughs> I have a toothbrush. Did you brush? I brushed my teeth. <laughs> He's got an afro. Wait, as well. wait a minute. Are you doing the questioning or am I doing the questioning? You are. You are. You are. Show me that driver's I'm license. Trying. Why are you doing that? Why are you? You, have, you have children? Yes. You have a picture of your child with you? Yes. You have a yeah, picture of your license. husband? No. No picture. Here. My license. Your license. Okay, now, uh, whose signature is the one without license? My signature, Meg Jenkins Law. That's right. That's right. Now, my you, that's worth $40. You can tell me the number of that license, you get another $40. 288 Take a look at this license and tell me if that's the right number. What does it say? Read it. One, two, five, one, two. One, two, what did you say? I think I said two, five. Oh, but you're from North Carolina? I'm from North Carolina. There you are. Who is that? My son. That's your son. Where's the picture of your husband? I'm not married. I'm divorced. You're divorced? That's no excuse. <laughs> Have you got a picture of a dog? A daughter? Yeah, a dog. <laughs> no, you got a picture. Listen, that's good enough having a picture of the kids. That says, how old is that son? Uh, he's 20. He's 20. All right, here's $40. Tell him to go to college. <laughs> Listen, I think we ought to get up there, right? All right, now, yeah, you come up here. You come up with me. And, and that man, come up here with me. Sure. Here, we'll just put this back in. Okay. Now, here's the way. We're going to do this very quickly. See, we're, we're working in shorthand today. Yes, sir. But uh, you turn around and face the here. cameras over here. Now, yes, you, sir. I gave you some money. You did. How much did I give you? $50. You remembered. You counted. How much money do you have? $50. In that empty wallet, right? In my empty wallet. All right. I'm going to let you do something. All right. I'm going to let you buy this box right over here for your $50. I'm not going to tell you what's inside of it, but you know, big things come in little packages. Al, what do you think? Well, I think it looks like a great package. It is a beautiful package. I'll tell you why. You can have it for $50. But if you don't take it, I'll give you another 50 and you'll have 100. I'll have 100. Don't take the box. I'm not taking don't the take box. Don't take the box. Not taking the box. Take the box. I don't want the box. <laughs> take the box. Take the box. I have to take the box. No, you don't have to take the box. I want the $50. You want the $50. She wants cash on the one. On the Here you are. I like the cash. Here you are. I have three children. No, you have three children. There's 30, 40. Is that 50? Yes, sir. That's so 50. So now you have 100 bucks. Look bucks. at what you could have had. Inside there, you could have had the trademark of our show, a rubber chicken. Oh! No, you don't want that. What was your name again? Meg. 
Meg. And where are you from? Hickory, North Carolina. Hickory, North Carolina. Okay. You're a beautiful girl. Thank you for playing Glass. Thank, Thank you very so much, much, Meg. No, sir. Where are you from? I'm from Kentucky. From Kentucky. Where about in Kentucky? In Lexington. Lexington, Kentucky. You ever go to the Kentucky Derby? Yeah, of course. Uh huh. Got a horse in the Kentucky Derby this year? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Now, see, there's a big box. Now, you saw a little chicken. There could be a big chicken there. But how much money do you have? 50 bucks. I'll let you buy that box for 50 bucks. But if you don't take the box, I'll give you another 50 bucks. So you have 100. Now the crowd is telling him what to do as they always did. So I gotta buy the box from you. Yeah, if you want to buy it. You sure you want it? Give me back the money. You sure you want the box? Give me back the money. No, I can't do that. No, no, give me back the money. Buy it. All right. Look, look at him, he's scared stiff. Let it go. Oh, and what a side right. job. He bought it uh -oh. for $50. He's You're worried. Not like he's this. worried. Oh. He's got a new television set, a new color TV set. It's a Sony 24 inch flat screen TV. Where's Sony, it from? 24 Sony 24 inches. Sony 24 inches. Isn't that like, that's you did yours. pretty good. That, wait a minute. I'm not through with you yet. I'm not through with you. What a, Carolina, come over, come back up here, Carolina. You got hundred dollars. You have a TV set. You want to buy a curtain for it? You want to buy the curtain? You want to buy? You want to trade your color TV set for the curtain? I'll, I'll do it. Would you no, do it? He gets first choice. You'd rather keep the TV? I'd rather keep the TV. Okay. All right. The TV is yours. Are you going to buy the curtain for $100? Sure. Don't take it. I'll give you another $100. You have $200. Uh, any more? No, that's it, honey. $200? I'll do the $200. You, oh, you, you don't, don't want, want the curtain? Do not want the curtain? I don't know. Uh, you're, you're telling me to take the curtain. Why don't you take the curtain? <laughs> you can't watch behind the curtain. How do I get it back to Hickory, North Carolina? Is it a we'll take care of that. We'll take care of that. You want to buy it? Give me sure. the money. Here's the money. All right. And what do we have behind that curtain, Don Pardo? You have a washer and a dryer. It's the new Frigidaire Energy Star Washer and Dryer. This Frigidaire top of the line model uses 40% less water while cleaning clothes with its gentle tumble action. The matching dryer protects your clothes while using 15% less electricity. A prize worth $1,399, provided by Frigidaire. Now I love it. You Did look you so like great big above. <laughs> Incidentally, you get the washer and the dryer, and I'm going to give you the $100 back again, too, so you can have all that. Thank you very much. Thank you for playing it. Thank you very much. I didn't get your name. What was it? Ronnie. Ronnie Perry. Ronnie, thank you so much for playing this big deal. Thank you all for playing this big deal. Monty Holmes, thank, thank you so very much. That was fun. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Congratulations. We really appreciate it. And you could have been up here playing at Carol yeah, Merrill's place. I, I, I think Al did a fabulous job being Carol Merrill. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Al and Carol Merrill, same That's side. Right. Yeah. You know, Monty, what's great is it still looks like you have fun no matter who you're dealing with. Well, I love the people. More today That's true. after yeah. these messages. Yeah. of you wanted to watch. Here come the newlyweds. The premise was simple enough. Take four recently married couples and have them predict how their better halves would answer a revealing question. Boy, did they reveal. Would you call him a real Don Juan? You bet, the real and the only. <laughs> no kidding. At times funny. I don't get to see no lingerie. Shoot. That's why it's in the drawer at home never see any more you can be certain of that yeah at times embarrassing he likes to serenade me with nude trombone playing nude trombone play. <laughs> and at times downright shocking because how will your husband say you would complete this sentence my husband is a closet what pat queen Bob Eubanks was the master of ceremonies for the newlywed game and the master of getting couples to say whatever was on their minds. When it comes to, when it comes, when it comes to making love, she said, you're a wimp. You don't like to try nothing new. Shut up. And Eubanks turned this word into a pop culture state. phenomenon. What food would he say he'd most like to make whoopee with? Whoopee making with you. Whoopee session. Whoopee. <laughs> Yeah, Martin, you know what Whoopi is, don't you? Yeah. According to former executive producer Mike Metzger, it was all in good fun. I, I never, ever remember one couple that ever broke up as a result of the show. My, 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 the sharp tradition, you can see it. It's nothing but lovers. Duds. Duds. You, 
I'm the first man you met when you got married. Why know what you're talking about? Philip said that he would meet he would meet this girl at a motel. What motel? On the newlywed game, the guests were always the stars, even if you couldn't understand them. The Sandy just sat there. She couldn't understand what I was saying. What the hell did he just say? Some guests couldn't even understand each other. It's unanimous. Your breath is awful. <laughs> The show wasn't just for the young, but the young at heart as well. Joe predicted you would say that, no, he's tried to make changes in you. What the hell's wrong with me? <laughs> but no matter the answer... <laughs> oh. <laughs> in this chapel of love, the couple always kissed and made up. <laughs> Again, we want to thank the Game Show Network and Columbia TriStar for the help in providing that footage. Without further ado, Bob Eubanks, how Hello, are you? How are you? You said that's the only time somebody passed out that's on the, the show? That's the only time anybody ever passed out on the show. I said, you just want a brand new piano. She go, oh, she's gone, man. <laughs> you know, before the newlywed game, I, I don't think a lot of people realize this. In, in doing this research, we found out you were a big uh, uh, concert promoter. You, you yeah. brought the Beatles to the Hollywood Bowl. I produced the Beatles concerts for three years, the Rolling Stones uh, for two years. Uh, every major rock and roll act, and then I got into country music. I managed the careers of Dolly Parton, Barbara Mandrell. I produced Merle Haggard's concerts for uh, about 10 years, and even some Loretta Lynn dates. When Loretta and I got to see each other. You know, I haven't seen her in a long time. She's a precious lady. So then how did you make the switch from doing that to, to game show host? Well, it all came at the same time. First mm -hmm. of all, I was a disc jockey, yeah. and a lousy one, may I say. <laughs> and uh, I realized I'd better do something, and so I got into the concert business, and the Beatles came along. I borrowed $25,000 in my house and presented the Beatles at the Hollywood Bowl in 1964, wow. and that was the beginning of a 20-year concert promotion career. Wow, and so w the idea for the game show came up how? Well, it was uh, uh, two guys actually were sitting in a restaurant, and they wrote on a napkin, husbands predict wives, wives predict husbands. They took it to ABC, ABC gave it to Chuck Barris, and, and it's history after that. Were you, were you surprised at, at how quickly this show became a hit? Well, the, the first day we went on the air, Secretary of Defense uh, McNamara gave a speech on CBS and NBC, and uh, ABC premiered the newlywed game. We premiered to a 44 share that day, and we never wow. looked back. <laughs> wow! <laughs> People at home who don't understand that, that that's, that's a like, lot of folks. That's like Super Bowl. Numbers. Yeah, that's a lot of folks. Yeah. During the years, how you know that you've done? Because you spanned three decades doing this show. Four. Four, I should say. Four decades. How have the newlyweds changed? People are more loving today than they used to be. Really? Uh, and they're. Uh, uh, they're better educated. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time when I started to show that 25% of those kids thought Hawaii was their favorite foreign country. Uh. <laughs> and, but not so today. They know about geography. Mm -hmm. uh, they're more loving to each other. It, it was tough. The last time we did the show, it was tough getting people to say anything bad about each other. Yeah. And so I think that's real healthy. It's real good. Were you surprised in the beginning that, at how revealing people would be about their lives? Well, they really weren't that revealing. It's just that the times were that way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was surprised that people would, you know, bear their soul for a toaster, for crying out loud. <laughs> and that's really what it came down to. You know? I, I asked a couple one time, I said, what's the one thing your husband told you not to talk about? She says, well, my husband and my cousin are going to kill my uncle for the insurance. <laughs> yeah? And I'm under the podium. Well, what made it funny to me, husband comes back in, he matches the answer. They're hugging and kissing. Them. Ten points. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> and he gets out in about five years. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you do this show, you, you, you see the best and worst of people, but do you, do you, were, was there any examples of where couples maybe you thought were having problems after because of no, what they answered? never saw it. And, you yeah. know, like Metzger said on there, I'd, I've never seen anybody yeah. leave mad. It was a piece of fluff. You know, in yeah. the department store of life, I lived in the toy department and I had a great time <laughs> doing it. Too. And, and now you're doing motivational speaking. I am. I am doing that. Uh, Who's been trying to make? Uh, and, and it's, it's, I'm having so much fun. This is, this is something that I've wanted to do forever. What I, what I learned on the newlywed game is I learned how to get people to talk. Mm -hmm. I learned that people skills are more important than technical skills. And so what I'm doing now is I'm traveling around to corporate America and I'm showing them in a very funny way how to enhance their people skills. And you know, Al, you are uh, usually uh, judged by the, the company you keep. Mm -hmm. So I went to four of the best speakers in the world. A lady named Emery Austin, a guy by the name of Mark Mayfield, a very funny man, David Naster, 
and uh, the, a, a really funny guy whose name is Joe Malarkey, uh, 60 Minutes called him the world's worst motivational speaker. We formed an organization called FiveEasySpeakers.com, and I got to tell you, we are the best five speakers out there. And I'm having so much fun because I get to go to corporate America, show them how to enhance their people skills, and in a very funny way. And so uh, this, uh, it's, I, it, you probably can hear the excitement. I'm having more fun now than I've ever had in my life with, with doing the speaking. Well, that's great. Well, we're going to have a little fun with you out on the plaza and three couples. Well, I got to tell you, if you're a corporation, you need funny speakers, good speakers. FiveEasySpeakers.com. Yeah, you way can't to go. slip that in anymore, Bob. No, okay, because <laughs> we got to go outside. Okay, we're going to play the game, right? There you go. You right. got it. When we come back, meet the newlyweds. We're going to play the newlywed game with Mr. Bob Eubanks hey. out on the plaza right after these messages. Stop our One of my one of my heroes, <laughs> Bob. You bet. All right. Well, Bob, are you ready to make some whoopee? Hey, Don, why don't you introduce our couple? I sure will. Couple number one. Yeah. Dion and Tanya Visconti. <laughs> Dion and Tanya are both from Manhattan, and they were married on August eighth, two thousand. Dion is a chiropractor, and Tanya is a dental student. Pregnant. And pregnant. Right. All right. <laughs> number two couple is Frank and Zena Leone. Frank and Zena are from the Bronx. They were married June 3rd, 2000. They were married 2000, but they have five kids. That's between them. That's my hero. <laughs> Frank is a steel fabricator. Zena is a nurse. And finally, couple number three, Chris and Larissa Whipple. Are any Who? relation to Mr. Whipple? No, I don't think so. Chris and Larissa are also from Manhattan. They were married on September 2nd, 2001. Chris is a venture capitalist, and Larissa works for a private philanthropy. Hell, who's are our three couples? Bob. All right, my turn, huh? You bet. All right, we're going to play a little newlywed game. You ready, guys? All right. Now, before the show, I went in with the wives, and we asked them three very easy questions about their husbands. So we're going to see how well they do. First two questions are five-point questions. Okay. The last one's a 25-point bonus question. Here's the first question. You ready? Gentlemen, what did your wife say is your most annoying little boy habit? Something you do that drives her nuts. What do you think, Dion? Oh, wow, that's a tough one. Uh, what do you mean it's a tough one? She didn't have any trouble at all. <laughs> <laughs> Great, I, would, I would have to say belch. You belch? Yeah. You know what she said? You belch? You're going to be a daddy and you belch? It's a it good, good role model. It is a good role model. <laughs> all right, she said you're most... Is it you belch too loud? You're right. All right. Five points. All right. Most annoying little boy habit, Frank. What do you think she said? I think she says, I snore too loud. You snore. You know what she said? No, she said, you, card please. First one. You blow your nose all the time. Whoa. Oh. Do me a favor. Don't do that today. <laughs> no, you don't no, get no, any no, points. No, no, no. No, no, no. Hey. No, no. Don't let her cheat. Out of way, Al. I'm glad you're here, man. Most annoying little boy habit. Chris, what do you think it is? I'm going to go with, uh, I pout sometimes. You pout. Yeah. Oh, let me see you stick your lip out. Like uh, that. Uh, I got a feeling you're going to be pouting again. That's my venture capitalist with his lip out. Now, you rearrange the condiments on the table when you go out to eat. What the heck is that? Those were three of the most boring answers I've ever had. <laughs> but life gets a little better. Okay. okay. Next question, gentlemen. Where did your wife say is the strangest, most unusual place that you ever wanted to get romantic? Uh, I'll explain romantic to you a little later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> He's got five kids. I, I know. He, he knows. Yeah. <laughs> strangest place that you've ever wanted to get romantic. Where would that be? No, you can't play the fifth. Hurry, please. Sorry, Mom. Uh, I guess I would have to say the bathroom. In the bathroom? Whereabouts in the bathroom? Uh, right probably when she's bending over brushing her oh, teeth. Oh, right. Right. oh, okay. Okay. No, okay, all said, of a uh, sudden they put up reruns of Sea Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> Card, please. No, it was on Tanya? the balcony of the hotel in your honeymoon where everybody, everybody could oh, see. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, man. No. Uh, Frank, I know it's been a long time, pal. But strangest, most unusual place that you ever wanted to get romantic. Where would that be? I don't know if we, have, we will ever discuss that, but... Uh, well, don't discuss, discuss it. Discuss it, What's you were answer? there. At his age, you got to talk uh, about it. <laughs> What's your answer, Frank? That's a tough one for me to answer. I know it's tough. Quick one, Frank. Hurry, Frank. Hurry. The most unusual place... Yeah, hurry, please. Uh... Frank, you're ruining my career. Hurry. <laughs> Any place, Frank. Any place. Uh, Pick a place, Frank. Any place in the house. Uh, 
<laughs> the living room? The okay, living room! The living room. Oh. He said the most unusual place you ever want to get romantic was in the kitchen! Whoa! All right, <laughs> leftovers again. <laughs> <laughs> Heating up the leftovers. Yeah. Okay, Chris, what do you think? I think we've always wanted to be a little bit of exhibitionist. Yes. So I'm going to say in a public park. In a public park? Yeah. Too cheap to get a room. Is that your problem? <laughs> yeah. Now, she said, you know what? In a cow pasture in Switzerland. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> woo -hoo -hoo. I guess when you heard bells over there, you heard cowbells. You know? <laughs> okay, how are we doing here? Oh, this couple's got tw five points. This is our 25-point bonus question. Uh-oh. Now, you've got to come up with an answer real quick on this Anybody one, okay? can take the game on this. Anybody can take the game. We ask your wife, is your husband less handsome, less sexy, or less smart than your last boyfriend? What do you think she said? Ooh. Are you less handsome, less sexy, or less smart than her last boyfriend? What do you think, Dion? Most definitely what? sexy. You're less sexy? Yes. Okay. Yeah, she said you are less sexy. Yeah! Woo! They go to 30. Okay, Frank, are you less handsome, less sexy, or less smart than her last boyfriend? I think she would say that I am more so. No, no, less handsome, less sexy, or less smart. Come on, Frank, Frank's you're running. killing us yeah. here. What's your answer? Less handsome, less sexy, less smart than your last word. That I am less sexy? Yeah. I think she would say, I am more... No, no, no Frank. Less, 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 less sexy? You less handsome, less sexy. What the hell are you doing over here myself? <laughs> less handsome, less sexy, or less smart than her last boyfriend? Just give me an answer. Um, Pick one. Uh, I would say... Less sexy. Sexy. That's okay. It. Okay. She said you are less, less handsome. handsome. Oh, no. no points. Now, when I asked your wife the question, this question, she knew the answer just like this. Uh, what is your answer? All the above. No, give me an answer. Uh, less smart. Less smart. You know what she said? She said you are definitely less sexy. Oh. Than All right. That means a couple number one. There are grand prize winners. Dion and hand. Tanya Visconti. Don Pardo, tell them what they've won. Today's grand prize for the newlywed game is a new Frigidaire refrigerator. Oh this professional series refrigerator in elegant stainless steel serves ice and filtered water through the door. A prize worth $1,799 provided by Frigidaire. All right. And you guys say you got to get, just get a house to put the refrigerator yeah, in. Yeah, they need a house. All right. And so that nobody goes out empty, even though you don't deserve anything, Frank. <laughs> What do our contestants get? Each of our contestants will receive a year's supply of rice a the San Francisco treat, and the special edition Today Show backpack. <laughs> all right. Hey, guys, you can see all of this stuff on the Game Show Network, and we have such a good time on Game Show Network. Believe me. Bob Eubanks, thank you so very much. It was wonderful. Thank and thanks to all our couples. Thank you, Bob. I haven't lost the touch yet. that famous musical challenge. Name that tune. Name that tune. Name that tune. Tonight, from Hollywood, it's Name That Tune. Name That Tune played its way into the homes of Americans across the country, becoming one of the most popular quiz shows in television history. Hey, nothing but Lana. Name That Tune. Before becoming the first American to orbit the Earth, Former Senator John Glenn made a guest appearance on the 50s version of the popular show with host George DeWitt. Name this tune. You know the name of that song? Liza. Liza, you are right. The music faded in 1959, but in the 70s, the show was back and better than ever, thanks in part to a new charismatic host. And now, here's the song of our show, Tom Kennedy. Tom Kennedy worked great as a host because he was very likable. He had fun with the contestants, helped them to relax in a tense situation, uh, and kept the energy up. No stranger to the genre, Kennedy was already known to audiences as the MC for shows like The Big Game, You Don't Say, and Split Second. But his talent for guiding contestants through a series of musical guessing games helped make him a game show legend. La, 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 Just in time! You got Perhaps the most lasting image of Name That Tune was the bid a note round. I can name that tune in seven notes. I'll try six. Five. Four. 
Name that tune. Joining Tom was a young performer named Kathy Lee Johnson. We'd all come to know her as Kathy Lee Gifford. She was called the La La Girl on the new $100,000 Name That Tune. After she left the show, Steve March Torme, son of the late entertainer Mel Torme, became a featured vocalist. Loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Loves you. Loves you, yeah, yeah. Got a tremendous amount of press from it, uh, which shows you the power of television. I mean, just a guy that was singing a few notes on a TV show. Those notes, combined with a chance to win some big money, turned Name That Tune into a household phrase. Music is something that everybody relates to, and I think that's why the show works so well. Everyone felt they had a shot at naming that tune. What is it? Just like me, they want to be close to you. You <laughs> Katie is in the studio Listen. driving us nuts. Oh, Damn. Damn. Can't wait. <laughs> Every song. Can you believe this, Tom? I can't. Tom Kennedy, it's good to see you. Thank you. Good. Listen, these are great memories you're dredging up for me. Well, you know, our, our producers, Gil Reesfield and Shemaine Pelzer, helped put those together. Oh, so we're, we're this really... is terrific. Listen, did you have any idea that this show was going to be as successful as... I mean, it had the run in the 50s, but all of a sudden, in the 70s, bam, it became a big... I didn't hit. dare think it was going to be as big as it was, mm -hmm. but I was hopeful because I remembered the radio show and the early show with George DeWitt they're talking about, Red Ben did this show, Bill Cullen did this show, and I remembered those days, and I thought, if we can just recapture some of that, we'll mm -hmm. be lucky, and it took off. You know, one of the things that we introduced on the new version, the 74 version when I did it, uh, was that bit of note. Mm -hmm. I can name that tune in seven notes. I can name that tune in six notes, and that really caught on. You still have people coming up to you saying that, don't you? Oh, to this day, yeah. I can walk, I can cross that street in five steps, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anything in it. <laughs> How did you get your start? A lot of when we've been interviewing a lot of your brethren, they they, they all started in radio and, and made, well, made them a lot them. of us uh, early MZs did. Yeah, we, we graduated, segued from radio into television. I started because my brother Jack Nars got into the business before I did. I didn't even dream of going into broadcasting, mm -hmm. but my brother Jack did, and he got into it and he liked it and he said to me, "Why don't you give it a shot?" I was living in Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky is where we're from. Jack went out to the West Coast, went to a radio school, got into the business, and then he, I came out and did the same thing. Now, what do you think about, you watch a lot of these game shows today, yeah. the newer ones, like uh, uh, Weakest Link, things like that. What mm -hmm. do you think of game shows that are being done today? Some of them are good and some of them are bad, and, and that's the name of that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll give you a good response to that. I think that Who Wants to Be a uh, Millionaire is the most perfectly constructed quiz I've ever seen. It is gorgeous. It's a work of art. Mm -hmm. And it was beautifully performed by Reaches. And I know it's slipping a little bit, but I think it's because they trampled the show. They yeah. just beat it to death. But it's a great show. And uh, there are some good ones. I think that Weakest Link is a, it's kind of a gimmicky thing, but it's cute. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't know, I don't know how many, uh, what kind of legs it's going to have. Yeah. You're working but, on a history of game shows, aren't you? Yeah, I am indeed. I have all this time, Al. I'm not working anymore. Uh, and so I put together a show. It's a live presentation with me narrating with clips and uh, theme songs and what have you. I call it The Wonderful World of Games as Perceived by a Recovering Game Show Host. <laughs> <laughs> That tells you everything you need well, to know. Great. About. Well, we'll look for that, Tom. We're so happy. You know, I, I want to warn you. Yeah. When Katie plays a game, yeah. it's a full contact sport. Oh, I can okay, see so, that. So are you ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. Yeah, right. I can hardly wait. All right, when we come back, Matt and myself, uh, Katie, we are all going to be squaring off against each other for Name That Tune out on the plaza. That's coming up after these messages. All right. So, Tom, you're going you're gonna to explain the game to us and how we're going to play. All right. This is going to be a little different from what you've seen on the air, but the competition is going to really warm you guys up. Is that a good idea? Yeah. All right. How many of you are for the women? Yeah. How many for the guys? Yeah. All right, here we go. You ready to go? We're ready to go. Are you all set, women? I'm going to call this, I'm going to call it Pick a Tune, because I'm picking a tune. Okay. I'm going to play for you a tune. Stand by your buzzers. Those are the buzzers right there where you think you know it. 
hit that buzzer, and then I'll come to you and see if you indeed can name that tune. Can we hear tune number one? Listen. Oh, you guys were first. What is it? Hot stuff. You did it! It's hot stuff. Can you hear it? Who had the big record? Uh, that's uh, right. Donna Summer. That's right. It was Donna Summer. Does he okay, get extra now. points for that? No, I just okay, wanted good. to know. All right. Okay. You ready? Here we come. Know. We're choking over here. <laughs> two number two. Uh, Who did you get? Oh, uh, oh, oh, you didn't know. Hey, wait a minute. Do you have it over here? Can he we play a little more? No. Can you play a little more. Yeah, Kim. It's a theme song. Yeah, they're trying to get help. What is it? Soap? That's it. Yeah. It's soap. Our stage manager, Mark, was Mark. going like this. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> You're disqualified. You're out of here. Okay. All right, Tom, go ahead. Right. Mark, stay Sorry, out of this next. Here's two number three. <laughs> oh, you come about. That man is right. <laughs> How you doing? I'm uh, feeling very nervous. I'm kind of not doing so well. Well, Matt hasn't helped at all either. So I know. knows my partner well. <laughs> Who had the big record? Who had the big record? Santana. Tito Puente. Oh, that's true. Tito all right. did it first. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Katie. Oh, so sorry. Look at the score. <laughs> <laughs> two to one. Two for the, the two one. for the guys. You one for the gals. Okay. Here is the fourth and final tune in this segment. Can I hear it, please? Oh, here. We here. Heard first. Oh, I said it. No, no, no. Little man. That is it. Oh, little man. Look at this. Look who's singing beeping here. We got it. Oh, was that what that means? I didn't know that. What was your answer? Piano man. Go that is it. They did hit first because the lights were closed. No, oh. we're gonna play another round. This now. Is that, that, yeah, that was pick okay, a tune. That was very and you guys and won. And I didn't cheat on that, that was one. Close. It was okay. three to one. <laughs> three to one, but we're not through yet. And we're we going need to, to come play. back here, girlfriend. Okay. Incidentally, ladies and gentlemen, on this next one, please do not give any answers aloud. And you have to remember that the answers they're giving you may be wrong. I'm not so. getting answers except for soap. All right, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We are going to play, folks, bit a note. And I'm going to give you clues for tunes. You yeah. listen to the clues. Based upon that clue, you tell me how many notes it will take you to name that Got tune. Okay. The highest bid is seven. The lowest is zero. The guys are going to start because they won the last round. Okay. Here we go. This is the first tune. Now listen. Everybody, they're all listening to this. This Gershwin hit was featured in the 1937 movie, Shall We Dance? So far, no help. All right. Starring okay. Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. So it's a Gershwin hit. So they start. The guys are starting. Now, the highest possible bid is seven notes. We can name that tune, Tom, in 250 notes. <laughs> <laughs> I think seven is the... Seven notes, Tom. They are saying they can name that tune in seven notes. We can name that tune, Tom, in six notes. Tell them no. Say. We can name that tune in six notes. There you go. <laughs> and you're on your own here, pal. Name that tune. They say. Tracy All right. Stark on the piano. Tracy Stark, six notes. Now, wait a minute. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Hold it, hold it. Here's a repeat of your clue. This Gershwin hit was featured in the 1937 movie Shall We Dance, starring Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Here are your six notes. The way you sip your tea. They can't take that away from you me. You did it! Okay. Thank you. Finally. I have a clue. 
sweating myself. All right. Here's your next one. Uh, this next song is the title track to a 1984 film about an unexpected romance between an out-of-work football player and a racketeer's ex-girlfriend. I'm glad I'm not playing this one. <laughs> um, so you got it? The next song is the title track to a 1984 film about an unexpected romance. I see a lot of blank faces here, but maybe not now over Now, Matt there. just had a... I know, and I see, but you start the bidding. Okay, I can name, we can name that tune in yes, seven notes. Seven notes. Okay. We can name that tune... Six notes. Six notes. Take. We can name that tune and you name that tune. Okay. Name that tune. <laughs> We're in deep trouble Six here. I think so. Here's the repeat of your clue. Title track, 1984 film, oh, unexpected yeah. romance between an out-of-work football player and a racketeer's ex-girlfriend. All right, here are your six notes. Can we hear those again? Yeah. Can we give them the six notes again? Oh, against yes. all odds. That's it! Against all odds! Can we hear it, Tracy? Tracy, go ahead and play. Yeah. Phil Collins. Oh, yeah. Phil Collins Phil is Collins, right. Yes. Good album. That is it. And the movie star Jeff Bridges and Rachel Ward. Phil that Collins. That didn't sound did like it. against all odds to me. Did it to you initially? Yeah. Yeah, we got it right off the bat. <laughs> okay. Okay. This all right. third tune is How a pop. How many more tunes are there, Tom? Yeah. Two. Two? Two. So more. the worst we can do is tie. No, no, no. There are three more. Uh, three more. If we have time. If we have time. We may not have time. All right, the third tune is a popular favorite among engaged couples when choosing a song for their wedding dance. It was recorded in 1961 by a legendary blues singer. I can tell you that Glenn Miller had a big hit in the mid-40s. Uh, uh, you won the last one, so you start the bidding. Seven, seven, seven notes. Six notes. No, say, I can oh, name oh, that tune in six. Tell them. I can name that tune in seven notes. Six. No, we six. said seven. <laughs> six. I'm sorry, I can name that tune in six there notes. There you go. What we can name? name that tune in five notes. Ho! Oh, no. Ho! We can name that tune in four notes. Oh! Name that tune, Katie. <laughs> four notes. It's a popular favorite among engaged couples when choosing a song for their wedding dance. It was recorded in 1961 by a legendary blues singer. Glenn Miller had it, too, in the uh, early 40s. And here are your, what was it, six notes? Four. Four, four. Six four notes. notes. All four right, notes. here are your four notes, Tracy. My love. Oh, no. Oh, you get it automatically. No, you oh. get it automatically. Yeah. But, but wait a minute. What, what is, is it? it? What at is last. It? That's at it. Last. At last. Oh, at last. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you had it. Here. I thought it was. It was at last. I was thinking about it. I know that song and who. Play it some more, Tracy. Keep going, Tracy. One more tune. No. I'm sorry, Ed. No. I'm glad you said something. Oh, we're wrapping it up. Name that tune. Oh, Thank you so much. Oh, but what was the score again? I forgot. Five to two. <laughs> I'm going right. to be a gracious winner. Thank Congratulations. You so much. All right. Congratulations. And what do we win? We don't win anything because we work here. We'll see you in the next hour. Select. Mixed words for the block. For a block of H.J. Laura, and again, for a sixth tie game. Here's the question. And that is Tic-Tac-Doe, the classic game show hosted by none other than Wink Martindale. As Martindale, as we wrap up our game show legend series tomorrow, Wink will join us in the plaza to play the game. Meanwhile, we're not... But Ann and I are the losers here for Name That Tune. It was sort of a pathetic showing by the women, but we have convinced Tom to stick around and play a few more rounds so we can try to catch up with our... Brilliant competitors. <laughs> but I want to say, Al did great. He really did. On the he last tune, you did have two of yes. the words from the title. Thank you very much, title. Tom, for it mentioning it. Last, because it is, at last, our love. Our love. My, and our, you said, at, at last, my, my love, love has come along. And you right. said, my love. So I got a little confused. So Rose, thank you for pointing that out. Okay. Do I get half a point for we that? Have, we don't have much time. You want to play okay. another one? Sure. Okay, okay, okay. Right. okay. okay. Focus. This is a popular 70s song that referred to angels and moon dust. It was this second number one hit for a brother-sister team. Don't say I know anything. what it is already. All right. Uh, wait a minute. Name, uh, how many notes? None? Zero. Zero. Do I get extra points she for says, naming it in zero? We'll ask Don Pardo. I don't okay. know. Yeah, you're, you must be talking about, can I just say it? Yeah, say it. Close to you by That's the carpenter. It. it is close to you. Yay! 
Thank you, Tracy. Oh, keep playing. We have time I think, over. is that it? We can oh, do one I, more? All right, here we go. Yeah, yeah, come on, that didn't take any time. We have a little more Katie, time. I'm on a song, roll. Katie, this song is from an 80s TV show which told the story of a school teacher who donned a red suit. Oh, here he goes. Oh, to fight no, I know. I can no, name that tune. Well. You, okay. you can start with seven, or you, and the lowest is zero. 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 Name. Wait a minute. Oh, that's right. I you don't get to play can anything. I sing it? Okay. Oh. Name it. Believe it or not. Is that Joey right? Scarbor Do you think jo that's Joey right? Scarborough. He is right. It is. Believe What's it or not. Walking on air, I never thought I could be so Can I ask you Believe it or not, it's just me. <laughs> you know what? I'm very glad I didn't. I was going to say, Welcome back, Connor. <laughs> what was the red suit part of it? I don't know. I that thought I the, forgot the red suit. The greatest okay. American hero was of the TV Cat. show. Yeah, whatever happened to William? Cat? I don't know. He was the daughter, he was the son of uh, uh, Bar Barbara. Uh, Barbara. Uh, Barbara. She played yeah. uh, and Bill Barry Williams. Mason's... Uh, and Bill Williams was oh. his dad. However, we digress. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, forget it. I said, uh, okay, Tom can Kenny, we this one? Wait, oh, no. can we do one more? <laughs> I'm out of tunes. They were out of tunes. Crazy. No. Crazy, we can you think of something? Okay. okay. All right. Already? Okay. Um, we're just blowing the whole half hour out here. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what. Look. Don't listen to Don them. Don't listen to Don Pardo, tell us what Matt and I have won. Each of our contestants this morning will receive a box of Eskimo pies and a special edition Today Show backpack. Nice. And a Today Show what? Today Show backpack. This is a tune about a state of the nation, a state in the nation. Okay. I'm going to give you one note, and it's about here. Could we hear it, Tracy? Oklahoma, oh, that's it! Oklahoma! Oh, 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 oh. We are the happy dance! We are the happy dance! These guys are unbelievable! Unbelievable! Tom, you were great. You've got to hand it to them. Tom Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen. Tom Kennedy. Let's hear it for Tom. Thank you. That was fun, thanks. All righty, let's check your weather, see what's going on right now. We are so pathetic. And you'll see as far as our... at the program that appealed to the kid in all of us. Tick, tack, go! Who would have thought that a simple kid's game would become a successful television game show? But that's exactly what happened when Tic Tac Doe hit the airwaves in 1956 with original host Jack Barry. If you were served escargot, what kind of shellfish would you be eating? Snails. Snails is right. You get an extra game of $400. Now, you didn't really need to be a rocket scientist to grasp the strategy, as players tried to put an X or an O in three boxes, either across, up, down, or diagonally. The show was later canceled in 1959, but 19 years later... It's everybody's game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. It's Tic-Tac-Toe! It was back with legendary game show host Wink Martindale at the helm. Once again, it was a hit. Producers increased the prize money, and a new bonus game was added. Look, are you going to the kitchen with this? Yes! Tic Tac combined with Joker's Wild in the 70s and throughout the early 80s, they were as big as, and as popular as Wheel and Jeopardy are today. They were big money makers. Much of that had to do with a former disc jockey by the name of Wink Martindale. Host gets to hold the lady's hand. He had hosted numerous game shows during his long career, but he reached new heights when he hosted Tic-Tac-Toe for almost eight years. Wink Martindale is a great communicator. There's a skill to be able to read questions unencumbered in a fast way where the contestants at home in the studio can understand what you're saying, and Wink did that to perfection. Name this detective. Shaft. Right! For Tic Tac Doe! So what was behind Tic Tac Doe's success? I think it was something that, that, that appealed and, uh, to, to people in general and that, that folks could relate to. The recipe for Tic Tac Doe, three ingredients. Great MC, easy game to play, big money. 
And Wink Martindale, good morning. Good to meet you. Hey, Al. Thank you. You started the week with Bob, and you end the week with Wink. <laughs> My mama and them would be proud. So proud. Let me, everybody has been asking, is Wink your real name? No, actually, Winston is my real name. Winston Conrad Martindale. Where'd Wink come from? Uh, it was, I used to play with a kid across the street when we were about six years old, Jimmy McCord. He couldn't say Winston, and somehow it came out Winky, so I became the Winky Martindale of Jackson, Tennessee. <laughs> well, I'm glad they shortened it to Wink. I should <laughs> think up a better story, but that's the truth. That's, it. Well, that's, a, that's, that's a good one. Now, you, know, you did this show for, for almost eight years, and yeah. in your career, 19 game shows. Yeah, I never could hold a job. <laughs> You know, you just go from one show to the next. How did, how, did you, how did you get started in the game show business? I know you were in radio. I became addicted to a show that Alan Ludden did around 1964 called Password. Mm -hmm. I just loved it. Yeah. Watched it every day. And I thought, I read about Alan on that show, and I found out that he plays golf six days a week, and one day he goes in and does five shows. And he comes back a week late. I said, you know, this is not a bad way to make a buck. <laughs> so I talked to my agent. I said, why don't I send me on a game show interview, which he did. And I think I got the first show that I uh, interviewed for, which was at NBC, What's This Song? Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, one of, you know, the NBC executives, as you are well aware here in New York, uh, they get paid the big bucks for making the big decision. Oh, sure they do. There were Bob Aaron, uh, who was head of daytime at that time, thought Wink was too juvenile sounding, so they shortened my name to Win. So for a year, I was Win Martindale. Oh, my. Yeah, he probably got a raise for that. That's right. <laughs> what do you, you know, you, you do this show, and, and you've got to, you know, bring the best out in the contestants. And yeah, there was one contestant, we saw him on during the piece, Tom McKee. Yeah, Tom McKee. He had a big impact on the show, didn't he? Oh, absolutely. It was our first season, too, Al, and uh, it was the best thing that could have happened to our show. We had just started, and he was the quintessential game show contestant. He wore the uniform of our country, mm -hmm. lieutenant in the Navy. He had a beautiful wife named Jenny, whom we showed in the audience all the time, and she just happened to be pregnant. Oh, man. And she would come up on stage. He was in the Guinness Book of World Records, still is, until Regis. You know that guy, Regis, with that yeah, millionaire show? I heard of it. Uh, Tom won $312,700 in eight cars during the run on Tic Tac Toe. He was on 46 straight days. I know he gave his brother in Africa, he was a missionary in Africa, he gave him a car. He sold the other seven and bought himself a Mercedes and put the other money in the bank. And he still, to this day, has a personalized license plate that says Tic Tac. <laughs> Which he should, right? But he was something. He was really something. Now you, you're doing this. You, know, you did this game show. It was, it was a, I mean, a huge success. But people don't realize in your radio days. I mean, you're, you were a good friend of Elvis. Yeah, I started at the age of 17 in radio and still do radio called Music of Your Life around the country. But uh, I had just uh, won a job on Clock Watchers in Memphis at WHBQ and happened to be at the radio station the night that Sam Phillips walked in with the first Elvis record. Blue Moon of Kentucky, so and that's this, right this month. Interview we're looking for. Okay, this came two years after I met him. I met him that night in 1954, and this was my, uh, remember when every city had its Dick Clark? Sure. I was sort of the Dick Clark of Memphis. I did a Saturday afternoon teenage dance party, and Elvis, uh, because we had known each other since uh, 54, he came on my show for an interview, and I think this is one of the, if not the first, one of the first filmed interviews that he ever gave. Colonel Parker never forgave me because Colonel wanted Elvis to be paid for everything. Oh. No free interviews. But uh, I still have that film and I, and I cherish it. That's right. We thank you for sharing that. Real quickly, what are you up to today? Well, now I uh, do music of your life around the country, a couple of hundred stations well, every day, which I do from home. Yeah, that's nice. I'll teach you how to get that kind of a gig one of these days out. <laughs> Do the weather from home. Want yeah. to get up at four o'clock? Uh, I also just uh, published my autobiography on the internet, and uh, just finished a CD called Winking at Life, uh, which is uh, can be found on winkingatlife.com. Just get that in there, and that includes a record that I made years ago, sold a million, called Deck of Cards, and it's followed me my entire career about a soldier who used a deck of cards in church because he didn't have a Bible. And the most recent uh, thing that's happened to me that I'm real excited about: the McCone Gaming Corporation in Las Vegas. Uh, is creating a, a series of Wink Martindale slot machines, uh, uh, which will be out in, in September. So well, I'm kind of excited. If I kind of pump your arm, you'll give me some money. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Somebody asked me about this time a while ago. I said, I played Monty Hall. I said, give me, if you have a driver's license in your pocket, I'll give you this for a buck. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Wink Martindale, we're about to go out to the plaza to play Tic Tac Toe. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. That's right after these. <laughs> this is the first time you ever did the show outside. Yeah, I don't think it'll be the last. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's well, chilly. It is. We have pre-selected two contestants from our Plaza audience. We're going to bring them up now. First of all, Sharon O'Connell from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Sharon O'Connell, come on up. There, stand right over here, Sharon. This is your first time on a game show? Yes. 
You excited? Yes. All right. You ready to play? Yes. All right. Let's meet your content, your your competitor, Mr. Chad Dawkins from Greenville, South Carolina. How you doing, Chad? Good. Thank you. All right. Now, have you seen Tic Tac Toe before? Yes, I have. All right. Big fan. Yes. All right. Well, the Wink Martindale, you're going to explain the game to us. Yeah. Here's the way we're going to play this now. In in pursuit of time, to save time, we've already put one X and one O up on the board for Tic Tac Toe. There are nine categories up there, nine boxes. And I'm going to ask a question. Sharon, you won the toss before we started, so you'll be the X player, and Chad, you'll be the O player. When I ask a question, if you get it right, we will put an X or an O up there for you, and we'll throw $50 into the pot. If you miss a question, the other player will automatically win that question, but in no way are we going to give you $50 for not getting one right. So we'll just forget the 50 bucks if you miss one. Is everybody ready to go, huh? All ready? All right, Sharon, you'll be going first, so look around there and pick one of those categories. We have Around the World, Spell This, Let's Play Ball, Back to Broadway, Famous Blondes, Hit the Road, and World of Books. What do you think, Sharon? Spell This. Spell This, okay, and the category is Spell This, and this is the question. Sharon, this state is spelled with 11 letters, but uses only four. What state is it, and can you spell it? It's spelled with 11 letters. Think about a long name, a long state. There will be no coaching from this very small audience. Otherwise, we will find you when we're over. What do you think, Sharon? I didn't hear a thing from that crowd over there. Okay. So do you know the answer? Mississippi. You got it. Can you spell it? M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 -I. You got it. That's it. And we put an X up on the board. So you got two X's up there already. All right, Chad, are you ready to go over there? Pick a category, please. All right, I'll and think we'll I'll throw take... $50 in the pot for that answer, Sharon. Chad? World of Books for the Block. I'm sorry? World of Books for the Block. I thought you might go there. Here's a good question. Give me the first two lines verbatim from the famous book, War and Peace. I just made that up. That's not really <laughs> one of our questions. Aren't you happy about that? All right, for a block. He wrote the Pulitzer Prize winning novel, Angela's Ashes, based on his experiences growing up in poverty in Limerick, Ireland. Who is he? I'm sorry, I your time know. is up. And the answer, how about it over here, Sharon? If you answer this correctly, we will have a very short game of tic-tac-toe. <laughs> and we'll throw another $50 in the pot. He wrote the Pulitzer Prize winning novel, Angela's Ashes, based on his experiences growing up in poverty in Limerick, Ireland. He also wrote Tiz, it's Frank somebody. Boop. Your time is up. And our game continues. Frank McCourt. <gasps> and no money into the pot with that. All right, Sharon, pick another category. I wonder where she will go. Uh, how about World of Books? Can we accept World of Books? Can we accept World of Books, judges? No, we the, cannot. No. As a matter of fact, do we put an X or an O there? Because, well, I guess we'd put an O, wouldn't we? Yeah, I think we yes, put an O, put there, the o yeah, there. Because we don't have more than one question on each That's category. Right. So put an this o is a very world abbreviated books. version no, no, of Tic Tac Toe. No, no, no. Okay, there we go. They're, they're, Sharon, they're, they're pick another category. <laughs> Sharon, pick um, a category. Oh. Hurry. Let's play ball. Let's play ball in the center. Okay. Oh. Question. Which two baseball Hall of Famers share their name with a candy bar? Babe Ruth. Yes. Um, um, um. Oh. One more. Does it have to be first and last name? No, just one name. So, oh, Henry. No. <laughs> oh, Henry. It's Remember when he played for the was... Yankees in 1920? <laughs> oh, Henry. That's right. Babe Ruth and Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson. Reggie Sorry Jackson? about that. Yeah, Reggie Baby Ruth and Reggie Jackson. Reggie's candy bar was the Reggie bar, right. and of course, Babe Ruth. Yeah. Okay, let's go over to Chad. Let's By the ball. way, we put... Uh, do we put an O in the center there? No, I don't think... Yes, no, we, we do. Yeah, we do. Because if we do, we'll have a winner. <laughs> oh! Oh, my gosh! Can that happen? Is that the way it works? I think it is. I think Did it I is. Did I do that right? Yeah. No! I guess they're saying no! No. Let's do it over again. We're, okay. we're, he's got to play. Let, he's got to okay. play for the. Okay. All right, the Chad. Okay. Let's play ball. <laughs> let's play ball. No, we can't go with let's play ball because I don't have another, okay. another question in that category. Well then, you know what? I told what? the producers about this. Let's do. Let's go back. 
Let's do back to Bro you pick another one. Jed. I was going to say famous blondes. There you go, famous, famous blondes. blondes. All right, now here's the question in famous blondes, Jed. This little sister from a much loved comic strip had a crush on her brother's best friend. Who is she? Uh, Veronica? No, no, not Veronica. Sharon, do you have any idea? It's Charlie Brown's Sally. Yes! Oh, Sally is correct. All right. So we put an X there. Famous blondes. So she gets, gets an X. She gets an X. All right, Sharon. Sharon, select a category. And I can't go back to the same one? No, I'm no. sorry, you can't. We only got one question then. <laughs> By the way, we, we throw another $50 in the pot. Uh, Sharon, uh, I don't think we can have a winner here. Well, we can't, we can't have a winner. This is going to be an old maids game. We can, do it, we can do it by who has the, num the most number of X's or O's. Okay, so let, let's continue. Pick one, Sharon. Back to Broadway. Whoever ends up with the most uh, X's okay. and O's, okay? Back to Broadway. Back to Broadway. Here's the only question in that category. This singing and performing duo recently completed a year-long stint on the hit Broadway musical, The Producers. Who are they? Ooh, shh. Big hit. Big stars. On the Broadway hit, The Producers. All right, Sharon, time's up. How about you, Chad? Do you have any idea? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, the answer is Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick. Oh, my gosh. Now, and do I, we put an O up for that? Does no, he we don't, it? because he didn't, get, he didn't get it. She didn't get it. Okay, that's so right. Both that's of you it. missed it. I th I'm, we're making this up as we go. How are we doing? Hey, Matt, how are we doing? Next time, we're going to have more than one question for each category. That's not a bad absolutely. idea. That that's would work. That's absolutely it. So okay. I think we're pretty much Can out of time. Now? Yeah, so we're, right. we're going to count them up. Uh, we've got three X's. So you got $150 for Sharon. And two O's. And $200 for uh, Chad. Should we give... Uh, should so we pay them off? They both are going to win $200. $200, $200 for each of you. All right. For each of you. There we go. There's 50 And for our runners-up, Don Pardo, Way tell go, us Sharon. what there they've won. Each of our contestants this morning will receive a year's supply of Lee Press-On Nails and a special edition today's show backpack. I know, the Winkster, well, you know, we're, we were kind of winging it as we went. No, but winking I, it. Winking it as we went. But I think it, it worked out pretty well. Chad, Sharon, you guys happy? Yes, You had well. a good time? Yes. That's all that matters. And again, I want to thank uh, uh, Shemaine Pelzer, Ms. Dee Dee Thomas, uh, Gil, and Carol Lee Carroll for doing this, and Jen Long. And, and Wade Martindale. Martindale. And Wade Martindale. <laughs> Pressure luck. Whammy, the all-new Pressure Luck coming to Game Show Network April 15th. All right, there you go. All right. Uh, let's take a, that's what's going on around the country. Wow. Here's what's happening. That's our director. Normally not this In your nice. neck of the woods.